Good morning, Lakeway. Good morning, Lakeway. Hi, I'm Alex Larson. I'm a member here at Lakeway, and I'm so glad that I get to welcome you all here today, especially the ones joining online. If this is your first time with us here at Lakeway, we have a welcome mug for you and a pen just a way to say thank you for choosing to come here on this beautiful Sunday morning. If you're also also, if you're a first-time guest, we have a visitor's info card. If you wouldn't mind filling that out and putting it in the offering basket later when it goes around, we just want a way to reach out to you and get to know you a little bit better and also say thank you for coming to Lakeway. Another thing, in the seat in front of you, we have a prayer request card. If you have a prayer, um, go ahead and write it down, and then you can say if you want it to be a private one, which will just go to the pastor, or if you want it to be um, for our prayer team and if you would like a phone call, if you'll put that in the offering basket as it goes around later today, that would be great as well. If y'all wouldn't mind standing, I'm going to pray for us, and then y'all can welcome each other when I go back to my chair. Lord, thank you so much for the blessed Sunday that you um, gave us today. Thank you so much for giving us a safe place to worship you. Um, thank you for all of the community that gathered here this Sunday. I pray for clarity for Pastor Mike um, as he gives the message and um, a worshipful heart for our worship band this morning. In your name we pray, amen. Take this time to say hi to one another. Good morning, Lakeway. Thank you, Alex. How are we doing this morning? How are we doing this morning? Are you sure? It's okay if you're not. <laughs> well, let's jump into worship this morning. And um, I don't have any, like, pearls of wisdom or anything this morning, so we're just going to give it to God. And let's get started every hour.
every day. Oh, I need you, Lord, and that will never change. The peace I come to know, though my heart and flesh may fail, there's an anchor for my soul. I can say it is well. Jesus has overcome and the grave is overwhelmed the victory is won he is risen from the dead and I will rise when he calls my
I'm going to invite the kiddos to come up and finish our worship this morning, and I want y'all to sing loud. This is a pretty new song to them, so they're going to need the audience encouragement, so y'all better sing loud. I'm going to be watching.
Well, that was exciting. So tell me, kids, when you were up there dancing and you were looking out at the people out here, how many of them were jumping up and down? Three or four. Three or four? <laughs> and what about the rest? Yeah, I wasn't jumping up and down either. In my mind, I was, but... Hey, I'm going to pray for you all, and we're going to send you on out to your classroom. Let me ask you a question first, though. Who knows what the word unique means? I know you know. I know you know. Go on, then. Unique means different. Unique means different? Yes. Anybody else? Yep. Different in a good way? Mm -hmm. What do you think? A way that you're talented in a certain way. All good answers, all right answers. We're going to talk about that in here today. I don't know what you're all going to talk about. Yeah, the, widow. the widow with Jesus. That's just a wonderful story. All right, come on over here. Let's pray for you. Let's all hold hands. Oh, here you, are. you just got here and now I'm holding your hand. Here, get, get in the group. Come on in, come on in. Let's everybody hold hands. It's okay, you don't have to be shy. Okay. Dear Jesus, we thank you for these children. We thank you for their teachers. We thank you for the lesson they're going to learn about Jesus today. Father, they are unique. They are wonderful, one of a kind. I pray your blessing upon them, and I pray that each one grows to know you and to love you more and more every day, and that they will be warriors in your kingdom. We pray all this in Jesus' name, and everybody said... Oh, Amen. Off you go. Oh, you're a good man, Tim. Thank you. I like that. How you all doing this morning? Good. Today is the day. What day is it today? shape. Yeah. He put it off a week and now we're, we begin officially today. So I want to welcome you all to shape. If you're a guest visiting with us for the first time, or if you're joining us online and you're wondering what shape is, what is that all about? Shape is a tool to help you discover God's unique design for your life. There are six sessions you're going to hear me talk about it six times up here, and then there is a small group Bible study sessions that go along with it. Now, each message is a standalone message, so you can come here on a Sunday morning, you can join us on a Sunday morning, and if you're not part of a group, you'll still get something out of it. But if you want to get the absolute most out of it, the best out of it, sign up to be in a group, because that's where you roll up your sleeves and you really get to work on this, discovering who you are, who God has made you to be, and helping other people discover who they are. And if you haven't signed up, like 90-something of you have signed up. I think that's awesome. If you haven't signed up, there's still chance. Brandon's going to be back there at the end of the service. Go back and talk with him, and we'll make sure we get you plugged into a group. And we've got all kinds of groups. We've got mixed groups. We've got men's groups. We've got women's groups. We've got groups in the evening. There are three on Sunday morning, and there's one during the day in the week. So you have no excuse. There's a group for you if you want to be in a group. So like I say, see Brandon. This morning, I want to give you sort of a big picture overview of, of the whole thing, what shape is all about, and then talk about what I just talked about with the kids, unique. Each and every one of us is unique. You ever heard the saying, one of a kind? He's one of a kind or she's one of a kind. I think pretty much everybody has heard that saying. And it's kind of a weird saying, one of a kind. Okay, are you, are you part of a group or, or are you one? And typically, like the kids said, it could be, you know, you talk about somebody who's one of a kind. There's something about them that's different. It could be how they look. It could be their personality. It could be a skill, an ability. It could be a personality defect. I've met some one-of-a-kinds. You don't really want to meet those one-of-a-kinds. <laughs> but you hear it often. You know, that he's one-of-a-kind. Well, you are one-of-a-kind. You are unique. Now, I dressed like this this morning intentionally. 
As I was going out, I said to my wife, how do I look? And I could see by the look on her face, I had hit the nail on the head exactly where I wanted to go. I wanted to look unique this morning, so I thought blue, orange, gray, yeah, that should do it. I was even going to wear odd shoes, but I didn't wear odd shoes. But each and every one of us is unique. Now, if you don't believe me, Mar Martha, are you in here? Yeah, come on up, Martha. I told her I was going to call her up on stage. Now, if you don't believe that you are unique, we are the same species. <laughs> My leg weighs about the same as Martha. <laughs> but we have, I mean, the DNA in the both of us is pretty much the same. The number of cells we have is pretty much the same. Martha's much better looking than I am. But we're of the same species, and yet we are unique. So it's an interesting, thank you, Martha. I told her I was going to call her up on stage. I have a sister who's about this tall. And uh, that used to happen to me at school. I've shared this with you before. We had a principal that would call us out of our classrooms. If he had someone visiting, we'd go all the way to his... She was in a class. She's older than me, so she was in a different grade. And we'd get to his office, and he'd have me stand there, and then he'd call her in, and their brother and sister. They'd laugh and send us back to our classroom again. It was like... Lovely. <laughs> this morning, I've got three simple points for you. Now, if you didn't get a, a, a sermon outline, sermon notes, raise your hand. We'll make sure that you've got one. Anybody need one? You've done a thoroughly good job today, Bob. Anyone over here? Anyone need one? Okay, three simple truths about your uniqueness. One up here. Yeah, or are you just kidding? Three simple truths about your uniqueness. You are unique. You are one of a kind. The first one, you are God's workmanship. You are God's workmanship. You are precious. You are marvelous. Now, those are not my words. Those are the words that God spoke to us through David about who we are. I mean, I could tell you that you're precious and you're marvelous, but that really doesn't carry any weight. I might be just trying to butter you up because I want you to do something. But when God says it, He doesn't need you. <laughs> if He says that you're precious and He says you're marvelous and, and you're His workmanship, then you're precious, you're marvelous, you're His workmanship. He does not lie. Psalm 139 is just a wonderful, wonderful psalm, psalm, and I picked a couple of verses out of it. And this is David. And he says, you made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. This is why life is precious in the womb. Never forget, you are God's workmanship. You know, we can always find a reason to be dissatisfied with ourselves, can't we? I mean, who we are, how we look, how we live. Culture, you know, we're just, I remember when I was a kid, so people, thank you God, sent me over to North America, people are taller here than they are in Britain, but, and people are taller now than they were 30, 40, 50 years ago when I was in school, and I was like a giant, I was the youngest kid in my year and the tallest kid in my year. And, and I was very self-conscious about my height. And then, not only was I taller than everybody else, but my arms are disproportionate. It may not look like it, but this is supposed to be your height. If you're well-proportioned, you do that, that's your height. Mine's like four inches longer, <laughs> as you can see by my jacket. I get jackets and I keep my arms bent, because if I straight, straighten them out, my arms stick out of my jacket. And, and I was so self-conscious about that. And my hands are big, it's too. If you ever watch videos of me, some of you have watched, and I had someone in church reinforce this to me one time. I watch your videos, Pastor Mike, but your hands are freaky. <laughs> it's like, thank you. Uh, and they are, it comes out in the videos. It's like, ooh, he's like, he's going to kill me or something. You can find reasons to be dissatisfied. And culture will help you find reasons to be dissatisfied. Dissatisfied with 
who we are, how we look, where we live, how we live. I mean, we live in a culture that gives us mixed messages all the time. And they're designed to breed discontent. It's the culture we live in. Content people are not profitable people. Happy people are not profitable people. We got to keep people discontent and unhappy. It's good for business. I mean, you go buy yourself a car, you feel good about your car. The immediate thing that that car company wants to do is make you not happy about that car. Because we're bringing out a different one next year. We've changed the switches on the windows. Way better than yours. They're gold now. You got one that's not gold? Seriously, why do you buy the one that's not gold? You need the gold one. And, and, and that's our culture. That's how it is. It feeds this message that you could be better. You could do better. You could look better. Are you really satisfied with, with who you are, how you look, where you live? In one breath, we're told to be strong, independent, in control of our lives. You're that kind of a person, and you should buy a Lexus from us. <laughs> and then, you, you know, and there's this constant, you know, you're doing okay, but you just need to try a little harder. You know, you just, you just need to push a little bit more. And it, and it never ends. We're told we don't look right. We're too tall. We're too short. We're too fat. We're too skinny. But it's okay. <laughs> we're here to help. You can have some of Pastor Mike's elixir. This will change your life. This message has not been approved by the FDA. May cause death. And we love you. <laughs> I mean, that, that's the culture that we live in. And we all get affected by that. That comes at us from every angle. Don't be happy with who you are. And if you're not happy with who you are, we've got pills for that. We'll help you with that. You are God's creation. And he didn't make a mistake when he knit you together in the womb. Now, does that mean that you're perfect, that I'm perfect? Absolutely not. We're all broken. There's always room for improvement. But when David wrote this psalm, he knew he was less than perfect. He knew that God knew that he was less than perfect. And, you know, so many times in the, in the psalms and in, the, in those early passages in the Bible, it says how David, that God loved David because he was a man after his own heart. David was passionate for God. God's passionate for people. David was jealous for God. God is jealous for people. That's why he called David a man after his own heart. But it's kind of weird because when it came to building the temple, and David was up for it, he wanted to build a temple for God, God said no. He said, I love you, David. You're a man after my own heart, but you're a nut job. I paraphrase. And he said, you're all about killing people, David. <laughs> kind of a little over the top there, buddy. And this is, God says this to him in First Chronicles 22. I want to build your, your temple. And he's like, yeah, I love you, man. But you're a bit of a nut job. <laughs> and yet, David wrote this about himself and his relationship with God. And he gave thanks for being the person that he was. Verse 14, it says, Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. Don't buy into the world's image of you. Buy into God's image of you. He loves you. You are beautifully made, knit together by him. Wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. Thank you, God. And you are his workmanship. The second truth about your uniqueness, you are set apart. Not only are we unique, but we were created for a unique purpose. Ephesians 2.10 says, for we are God's masterpiece. Anybody ever think of themselves as a masterpiece? Raise your hand if you think of yourself as a masterpiece. And even if you did, you'd be embarrassed. To There's one. Good for you. You'd be embarrassed to raise your hand, typically. But you are God's masterpiece. So if you're a masterpiece, raise your hand. 
We're doing it till everybody's hands up. You're a masterpiece. If you're a masterpiece, raise your hand. Yes. <laughs> That's hard for us, isn't it? Because we get beaten down so much. But you are a masterpiece. You, we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so that we can do the good things He planned for us long ago. You are uniquely shaped for God's purpose. You are set apart for God's purpose. God has a purpose and a plan for each and every one of us. Yes, we are broken. Yes, we are sinful. But when we accept Jesus, Jesus accepts us. And then He gets to work on us. Starts to chisel off all the rough points and starts to smooth off the, the bits that don't look good. And every single one of us is a work in progress. But if you've asked Jesus into your life, you are making progress. He forgives our sins. And then He begins to repurpose us for His work. Work that He set out long ago for us to do. Good things. I love the way it says that. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things He planned for us long, and long ago. Things that will make you feel good because they are God things. This is why shape is so important. It's going to help you discover your God-given identity, your real identity, outside what the world says to you, outside what I say to you, outside what anybody says to you. This is you in God's eyes. You're a new creation created for good things, things that God set out for you to do long ago. And it is the key to satisfaction and contentment in your life. You know, years ago, I was a bricklayer, <laughs> and I enjoyed laying bricks. It's, there's something, I've, I've shared this, I know before, there's something about going home at the end of the day and being able to look at what you've done. It's right there. You can see it. You know, it's like, wow, you can feel proud of it. You can feel good about it. And if you don't feel proud about it and good about it, there's something else going on. I like to lay bricks, and I fit in with the construction guys. I kind of like them. I'm a blue-collar kind of guy. I didn't like to talk to people, though. Sit me over there, and I'll lay bricks all day long, and I'm happy doing it. And, but talking to people, I mean, I talk to people on the scaffolding, but stand in front of people and talk to them, Ugh. no, thank you. And then something happened in the economy, and... and Bricklaying and construction dried up, and I'm not one to sit at home. And I got a job selling encyclopedias door to door. Yeah, I heard that. Ugh. Yes, that was me. <laughs> Which was great. You know, they, they taught me how to knock on doors and, and talk to people. And I didn't like talking to people, but now I had to talk to people. And and I did okay at it. I didn't do great. And if it wasn't for Sandra earning income, we'd have died. <laughs> and I was in sales for like four years. And then I went back to bricklaying again. And in that time, when I first started bricklaying, I was a heathen. And somewhere in the sales part of it, I, God came into my life and started changing me molding me and making me something that would work for him. And I love how he used my job to teach me how to do the things that he was going to use me for later. He taught me how to talk to people confidently. And, and when we started going to church and God got into our lives, it wasn't long after we were in church that I thought, well, you know, we need to do something. So I started working with youth, with junior high, they called it up in Canada. Do they call it that here? Yes, good. And then, or maybe they call it something different up there. I can't remember. Junior high, which was great. I loved talking with the kids because I didn't know anything and they didn't know anything, so I could tell them anything. <laughs> and then senior high, 
And then eventually we, we joined a, a, a small group and we were part of a small group. And, and, and at some point on the journey, I remember one of a pastor saying, well, we're going to do this evangelism thing, pray about evangelism. And, and I joined the evangelism team and I learned how to share my faith. And, and then we started leading a small group. And, and there was just this progression as God kind of took hold of us and, and purposed our lives. And as much as I loved bricklaying, as much as I loved being able to see something, there was nothing greater than the satisfaction of being in God's hands and being used of God. To do things that I didn't like to do, talk to people. And I got to see people come to Christ. I got to see people ask Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior in their heart because of the gifts and abilities that he had given me. I got to see young kids' lives change because God was working through me. And there was no greater satisfaction, and there still is no greater satisfaction in my life than what God has called me to do. God has a purpose and a plan for your life. And if you want satisfaction in your life, pursue his purpose and his plan for your life. That's what this, this whole year is about, called. Helping you to pursue God's calling in your life. All right, I better keep going here. Third truth about your uniqueness. Now, this is, I entitled this message, You Are of a kind. One of a kind. You are of a kind. You are uniquely you, but you are of a kind, and that kind is Christian. If you've asked Jesus Christ to come into your heart as Lord and Savior, you, you, I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. I'm not just a believer. Satan's a believer. He's certainly not a Christian, but I'm a follower of Jesus. You are of a kind that is unique. You're not born Christian. Nobody is born Christian. Some people think that they're Christian because they grew up in a Christian household and their mom and dad took them to church and it's just been part of their lives. That's not what makes you Christian. You become Christian by answering God's call and accepting His Son into your life, which takes us back to our theme verse for the year. Don't put it up yet. Hold that verse. I should have told him. Who knows our theme verse for the year? First Peter. It's in your outline. <laughs> First Peter 2 9. But you are not like that. Like what? Like them, like the rest. You are unique. You are not like them. For you are a chosen people, plural, a unique people. A holy na- a royal priests. Royal means that you are set apart a unique purpose to serve God. A holy nation, to be holy, literally means set apart. That's what it means. But we are set apart as a group, as a kind, together. God's very own possession. Anyone ever tell you've been owned? You're owned. It's a good owned. You're owned by God. As a result, you can show others the goodness of God. That's purpose, for He called you out of the darkness into His wonderful light. We, all of us, as a community, are of a kind. There is a commonality between all of these unique people in this room, and that commonality is Jesus Christ. We are owned by God, called out of darkness by God to show people the goodness of God. All of us have a purpose and all of us have a role. And you're going to see that as we carry on through, through shape. My, my calling as a pastor is to help you find your purpose so that you can fulfill your role and find true contentment and satisfaction in who God has called you to be. That's what shape is all about. So let me just explain it real big picture here. So you've got it in your bulletin, shape, and you've heard me say it a few times. S, spiritual gifts. 
Bible tells each of the, every person that accepts Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, the first thing that happens to you is that the Holy Spirit is given to you as a gift. Now, there are multiple reasons for this. It's a seal on you. It's God's way of saying, no one can steal you. I've put my seal on you. It is the Holy Spirit. And it can't be taken away. One of the other reasons that you get the Holy Spirit is because the Holy Spirit endows you with abilities that are not natural to you. They are spiritual gifts. They are things that God will give you to do the work that He's called you to do. And next week, we're going to begin on that. Now, that can be a little tricky because it's easy to mix up our natural abilities, what we like to do, with our spiritual abilities. And typically, your spiritual abilities are recognized by the people around you. They see something in you that you don't nat naturally see. This is why being in a group is important. You need people to observe you and see you and maybe come to you and say, hey, have you ever thought about this? And your first word is going to be, nope. I don't think so. And they're going to say, yeah, well, you know what? Just pray about that because I, I see God doing something in you. You know, when I ask, talk to people about being small group leaders, the first thing I do is I ask them to pray about it. And then I ask them to look for the evidence that maybe this is a direction that God is calling you in. And I'll say, go away, pray for a couple of weeks, and see what God does in a couple of weeks. And time after time, they would come back to me and they say, you know what? Over the last two weeks, I've had four different people come to me and ask if they could talk. So, yeah, people are seeing that in you. They're seeing someone that they want to talk to. They're looking for wise counsel. God is using that in you. But sometimes a person doesn't see it in themselves. So that's the spiritual part of it. Heart, that's your passion. What makes your heart beat a little bit faster? So Alan and Candy right here. Motorbikes. They like motorbikes. They like motorbike people. And God is using their passion for motorbikes to bring his kingdom into that group of people. And, and Alan and Candy have, have signed up to do that. Now, we talked this week. Alan and I got together. And we talked, well, how does that spill over into what's going on at Lakeway? So they are actually going to be leading one of our shape classes this week. Our Thursday group with the bear back there is kind of, oh, he's not back there. He's back there. Is, is full. Are you in here? He is back there. We like to keep him hidden. I'm talking about Tim Larson. Denise is nice. <laughs> that group is jam-packed on Thursday, so we're meeting here on Thursday. If you're in the Thursday group, and we're going to portion people up so you get a better experience. But they're passionate about bikes. And God is going to use that passion to advance His kingdom. <laughs> Abilities. God will use not just your spiritual gifts and not just your passions, but we all have natural abilities. I think about um, hmm, Kevin and David. Kevin's back there. David's here somewhere. Putting in thermostats, putting in cameras. We've got a whole security system that got put in yesterday. I get a text the last night. Cameras are all up. We want to make sure our kids are safe. These guys are here working on this stuff, setting this stuff up. It's what they do. And they can use those abilities to advance God's kingdom, keep our kids safe here. You've got abilities. You've got things that you can do that God can use to advance His kingdom. Personality. Who God has shaped you to be. I think about Barry. Where are you, Barry? And, and Bob and Martha. I've called Martha up already. You know, when, when you come in the front door, you've got these people who just have that natural way of, hey, how you doing? And you, you got so many people, when they come to Lakeway, and I ask them, you know, well, I don't know what got you here, but what kept you here? And time and time again, it would be the same thing. People are just so nice. People are just so friendly. And I know that's to do with the personality of, of those people out at the front door when people come in. Martha's made the coffee. Bob's running around giving people bulletins and, and Barry shaking hands and smiling at people. It's their personality. It's natural to them. We don't let Tim do that. 
He's not even in the room with us. He's back down there somewhere where it's safe for us. <laughs> Poor Tim. And then E, your experiences in life. God will use all of your experiences, good, bad, all of your experiences. Sherry, you're in here somewhere, I know. Where are you, Sherry? Is she back there with the kids? Oh, okay, Sherry's back there with the kids. Sherry's husband passed away some years ago, Jim. So Sherry came to me recently and, and said, do we have a grief share class? We don't right now. And she said, well, I, I want to lead a grief share class. So she's looked at her experience, a painful experience in her life, and she's come to God with it and offered up this experience and said, how can you use this, God? I know how painful this is. I can help other people with their pain. God will use all of your experiences to advance his kingdom. We are unique of a kind, and as a kind, we seek to build the kingdom of God together. Hand in hand together. We fit together like a puzzle. I put a puzzle up there. I couldn't find a very good puzzle, but that one wasn't bad. You know, each piece, if you take a piece out of a puzzle, it's kind of a weird shape, right? And, and it doesn't look like anything. And that's each one of us. But when you put all the pieces together in the puzzle, it comes up with something that is beautiful. That's us. We fit together. We're all a part of the puzzle. Now, here's the important thing, and one of the most important things about shape. We don't want a puzzle with pieces missing. And God has a purpose for each and every one of us. Every one of us is a part of the puzzle. Now, God's going to do what He wants to do, regardless of us. But when you can be part of something that is bigger than you and more beautiful than you in the nicest way, it gets the heart going. It gets the, it, it's, it's a beautiful thing. Unique together. Now, on that note, I'm taking a little sidestep here because uh, last week we, in, we welcomed a number of people into membership, and there were a couple that were sick, and they're better. So I'm going to call them up right now, Janet and Gary. There you are right in front of me. Janet and Gary have lived just across the road for many years. Didn't know this was a church. They thought it was the local Louisville swimming. And then when they discovered it was a church, they thought we should try that place. And for some reason, whatever, you know, they came through the doors and they met Barry and they met all the people and told, this is not a bad place. It's right across the road. I like this place. And they came to a pastor welcome lunch and they met me and they're still here. <laughs> and then recently they did 101, so they've now fulfilled all the requirements for membership. So it is my honor to welcome you, Janet and Gary. You need to talk to this guy. He's got quite a... You need to talk to this guy. <laughs> Welcome to membership. Did we get a picture? Here, hang on a minute. Did you get a picture? Oh, we got pictures. You are dismissed. <laughs> Let me close with this, 11.22. All right. This is the hard part. There's a sad reality about all of this. And it's why it is so crucial that we get as many people involved in shape as possible. You, we, us. We are of a kind. But our kind is an endangered species. Fewer and fewer people are coming to faith every year in the USA, in the Western world. The Christian church is in decline, especially with younger people. I look at the kids that come up on stage. My grandkids weren't here today. They're down at Scarborough Festival. They love doing that every year. And I worry about the kids. 
I worry about my kids, I worry about your kids, I worry about my grandkids, and I worry about your grandkids. Because a lot of people start off on the right track. But it's not like it used to be when we lived in a Christian culture. That culture is gone. It used to be if you raised up a kid, everybody they knew at school was a Christian. Everybody they talked to was a Christian. It wasn't a big stretch to get them at some point in their life to say, yeah, I want Jesus. But that's not the culture that we live in anymore. And the world is stealing our children and our grandchildren. Now, we live in a hand-me-down culture. That's what Christianity is. Anybody get hand-me-downs when they were a kid? I did. I had two cousins that were taller than me, that didn't live in the country near where I lived, but they'd come visit us once a year, and they'd bring boxes of stuff, clothes and things, and, and I'd get all these hand-me-downs. It was, oh, yeah. Christianity is a hand-me-down culture. If we do not live our faith, our calling, our destiny, these children cannot live their faith, their calling, their destiny. We cannot let the world shape our children and our grandchildren. It is our responsibility. We've been called to do that. They must get their shape from their Father in heaven, and He has entrusted us with that mission. We are to duplicate our kind. This is so, like, I'm, I'm so proud of you all because we typically have about 90 people in here on a Sunday morning. We have 90 people signed up for Shape. I mean, that blew me away, it really did. It chokes me up. But it's important enough that people get it. And if you didn't sign up, you, you have a chance today. You can go back there. We'll fit you in somewhere. Let me, let me close with this. Have I said that already? Okay. <laughs> let me really close with this. Take two, yeah. Finding your shape is liberating. It frees you up to be you. You don't have to be what I tell you to be. You don't have to be what your boss tells you to be, what anybody tells you to be. You only have to be who God tells you to be. And He created you to be you. And He's in the process of shaping you to be the best you that you can be. He has in uniquely equipped you to be you. And He uses everything about you to enable you to be you for Him. It is absolutely your best life. I'm not talking about who had that book out, Your Best Life. The guy at the big church. And who? Okay. <laughs> it's not that. When you're living your best life, it is a beautiful thing. It is an awesome thing. When you're living your best life, you are in your sweet spot. Now, life may still be a burden. Don't get me wrong on this. Life may still be a burden. Stuff happens. People get sick. Sometimes you get sick. People you love get sick. People die. Relationships fail. Things don't always go the way that we want them to go, the way that we pray for them to go, the way that we ask for God to make them. It doesn't always go that way. But when you're in your sweet spot, when you're in the place that God has called you to be, living the life that God has called you to love, in the midst of all of that, in your very core, you have a strength, you have a love, you have a purpose that will carry you through every circumstance. And I'm not just saying this. I've lived through some very difficult circumstances. But by the grace of God, through the power of God, I'm still living my best life. There may be a bit of room for improvement, but God has uniquely shaped you. 
And he has a path for you. And he has a purpose for you. And it is the absolute best for you. The question is, will you pursue that path? Ninety of you have already said, I'm up. I'm up for this. And like I said, if you've not signed up for it, this is kind of stirring you a little bit. Go back and talk to Brandon. Brandon, would you wave? And he'll get you pointed in the right direction, and we'll get you plugged into a group. They start tomorrow. First group is tomorrow. They run through the week. All right, let me shut, shut it down there. <laughs> no, really. <laughs> I don't know if it's come across. I'm passionate about this. I am absolutely passionate about this. Because the journey that God has had me on from drunk bricklayer to where I am has been the most exciting, best journey in all of my life. Has there been tough times and all of that? Absolutely. Would I change anything? Yeah, I would. But it's still the path that God has me on, and He has a path for you. Join Him on the path. Amen? Let me pray for you. Father, I give you thanks for each and every person that you've brought here today. I thank you for those who are watching online. I thank you for those who are going to watch. And Father, I pray that in the midst of all of the mixed messages and everything that the world sends us that that seeks to tear us down and bring discontent and unhappiness in our lives, Father, that we would come to that place where we put our eyes upon you and we know that we are uniquely made by you wonderful, your workmanship, and you didn't make a mistake when you made us. Father, I know that we are flawed, but you use our flaws, and one day you're going to bring us to wholeness. Father, may we be a light to our children, to our grandchildren, to one another's children and grandchildren. May we be a light in our neighborhoods, in our town, in our families. Help each and every one of us find our shape and pursue the path that you have for us. And we pray this in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. Alex, would you come and give us the good tidings of everything that is going on? Oh, there is a meeting. If you're leading a group, Going to have a quick meeting in the Wayne Gretzky room. 99. Uh, won't be too long, but uh, please come down and join us there. Hi. I don't know about y'all, but I'm super pumped and excited for what shape is going to bring to this church. I don't know if it's just because Pastor Mike is so passionate about it, and so it's bleeding into like me, but I've been looking forward to this since he mentioned it um, for the first one, so... I'm excited, Pastor Mike. I hope y'all are too. Um, Can I have the men that are going to collect the offering come forward, please? Um, So the offering, God has blessed us with so much in our life. And like, this is just a way for us to serve and give back what he's given to us. It's an act of worship for us to um, tithe and offer. And if you cannot do that, like right now, please know that there's a QR code on your bulletin. If you scan it, you can do it throughout the week whenever it's on your heart. Um, Again, it's just an act of service and an act of worship for our Lord. If you wouldn't mind, I'm going to pray over the offering, and then I'll get into announcements. So if you'll bow your head. Lord, I can't thank you enough for all you've given me in my life, and I just pray that you bless this offering to use it for our community and for our church, Lord. You have a plan for what Lakeway is going to do with this money, and I just pray all the good things for it. In your name we pray, amen. So Shape starts this week. Pastor Mike said it a bunch of times, but if you have not joined a small group, we highly, highly encourage you to do that. Um, You can go see Brandon in the back. I'm so excited for it. Um, Just another way to dive deeper into God's word and find out who you are. On... April 28th at 5 p.m., there's a woman's theme dinner. Um, This has been such a highlight of my spring. 
I don't know about y'all, but I was in college for a long time, and this was just like a pause, just a refreshing breath to like meet with a group full of women and just ha- sit down, have dinner, listen to a message either on video or by um, one of our sisters in Christ and have a moment of worship. It's just a nice pause before you go back to your busy work week. So I highly encourage you to um, sign up for that. Uh, sign ups close by April 21st. It's $15 out in the foyer. If you haven't um, signed up yet, again, I highly encourage it. See Becky or Courtney Klein. I don't think either one of them are in here right now, but someone will be at the small little B table in the foyer. Um, two things to sign up for, both by the Edmondsons, the lawn care and um, special events volunteers. It takes a village to run a church and like the men and women that truly serve in this church they put their hearts and like minds into it um but it's tiring and so sometimes you just need a large group of people to like really pour into it um so the lawn team you could sign up I think he wants a big group so that way you only have to do it once a month or a few times here and there instead of the same five people doing it every single day or every single weekend for multiple hours. Um, give up one weekend. And it's a way to have a community, just a group of people to talk to while you're mowing the lawn. Personally, I don't think I'd be very good at it, but you never know. I could pull some weeds if I needed to. Um, and then special events. We participate in a bunch of special events. Either we host them or we join with like whatever the Colony Rec is doing. Um, And it's such a fun way to reach out to our community around the church and pour into them. So that's another way to be a light to the community. If you are interested in that, shout out um, Christy and she'll get you plugged into that. My last announcement for you, it's not in the bulletin, but our youth building is getting cleaned out and they have a couch or two couches. Next Saturday at Hawaiian Falls or Hawaiian Waters, I think they changed their name, they're doing a city cleanup and they'll have dump trucks. Um, If we could have some volunteers, preferably if you have a truck or a large vehicle that can haul two couches, um, to come up here next Saturday, load the couches in the truck, take them to Hawaiian Falls, and then you're done. Um, But we can't do that by hand, so if you have a truck, um, please reach out to John the drummer for that. Well, yeah, I was going to say John the Baptist, but the, he's not John the Baptist. Um, I do not have a time for that, but John the drummer will have a time for you. 8 a.m. 8 a. with a truck and two couches. We can do this. We got this because um, we can't throw it away in our, our dumpster out there. They just won't fit. Um, That's all the announcements that I have for you today. If you wouldn't mind standing, I'll pray us out. Lord, thank you again for everything that you're doing here in Lakeway. Thank you for opening our hearts to see you and opening our minds to hear your word, Lord. I pray that whatever people need out of shape, that they get it. Your will is what's supposed to be done, and I just pray that That's what's on the forefront of everyone's mind. Help Lakeway be a light to the community around us. Help us be the arms to reach the people that you need us to reach and be the voice to pour into them, Lord. In your name we pray, amen. Y'all have a great week.